The prospect of artificial general intelligence is now upon us with systems like chat GPT, we're once again confronted with the possibility that computers can in fact think and that minds are essentially another form of computation or they implement computation. Now, we've always wanted to believe that we human beings are special, that there's something fundamentally different about us, something that cannot be replicated in any other way, that there is a non-material element to thought and that whatever that is, it can't be replicated in a machine. But when we see emergent behavior, such as what we're now beginning to witness with uh, GPT, with transformers, one wonders whether, in fact, artificial general intelligence, human-level machine intelligence is around the corner. And when you see reactions to the prospect of this technology materializing, in general, there's a lot of fear. People are worried about the fact as to whether they will be valued in their jobs, uh, what they will do, how they will make a living, and so on and so forth, whether automation will replace everything that we do as a species. Now, over time, obviously, jobs and the types of jobs that we do have shifted, and these shifts have been beneficial for humanity. For example, 150 years ago, 90 plus percent of the population, of the working population, was involved in producing food, was working at farms, on farms. And now that kind of production, while it was necessary and while it provided people with employment, it consumed so much of the available labor pool that other aspects, for example, the development of technology, for example, the literary arts, for example, music, they did not have the kind of um, resource, the kind of mental focus and attention at a societal level that we have today. And most of us would agree that in today's economy, in the United States, for example, at relatively low levels of unemployment, we have a very diverse pool of, of talent that's focused on so many different areas that, go, that goes far beyond farming. And we're all the better for it. Our economy is stronger, and we have more interesting products and ideas to consume in our economy. So why wouldn't AGI or the advent of AGI be like these shifts of the past? In other words, where some new type of job is created or invented, and we simply move to that other new job that we might not know what it is today. But then again, we didn't know that YouTube professional or YouTube content creator was a job 50 years ago. Nobody could have foreseen that. Well, one of the reasons why people are skeptical that it's going to be just like these past shifts and changes is because if you think about human beings, really we have two capabilities. We have physical muscle, the ability to do physical work, and in that regard, we are not unique. For example, there are animals that can run faster than us. There are animals that can lift weights that are greater than what we can lift. So we are not unique or the most capable when it comes to the exercise of physical muscle. But one area where we are unique, and for all practical purposes till this day, have been the most differentiated, the most powerful, is in the exercise of the so-called mental muscle, our cognitive abilities. There is nobody that we know of, no other species that we know of, that can outthink us. And this has made us unique. However, with AGI, with artificial intelligence, that prospect is up for debate, whether we will continue to be uh, a species that can outthink everything else in creation. If artificial intelligence can outthink us, and robots can outperform us mechanically from the point of view of muscle strength, well then, how are we unique? And what possible job could we do that machines couldn't do? If they can outthink us and they can outrun us, they can outlift us, then what is unique about human beings? So that's one of the reasons that makes this particular shift very different to shifts of the past. In other words, there is no tangible bit of differentiation that one can point to at first blush and say that human beings would continue to be better at this particular thing. So how do I see all of this and do I react to the prospect of AGI with fear? Well, as I've written in my book, The Sentient Machine, my view is that one of the things that's working in our favor is that we live in a universe which is, for all practical purposes, infinite. 
And in a universe that is infinite, there are infinite ideas, infinite knowledge that is waiting to be discovered. So now imagine the infinity, not just of the physical space and time in the universe, but the infinity of ideas, the infinity of knowledge, where each acquisition of knowledge improves us in some sense as a species, propels us forward, allows us to do more, allows us to understand more, explore more. Imagine this infinity of ideas laid out in front of you like a landscape. And now imagine that each one of us, each mind, is a traveler, is an explorer of this landscape. And each one of us is born with a particular bent, with a particular set of biases, with a particular set of ideas. And as we grow up, we are then taught different views, different rules, different religions, different perspectives, and they bias us further. Now, each one of these biases can be good because combined with our genetic bias, this, uh, uh, this additional teaching that we get as we continue to grow and evolve into adult human beings gives us a perspective. And each one of us is in this landscape embedded as a traveler with a unique perspective. Now you would ask, well, what place does AGI have in this landscape? Think of AGI in the same way that you would a human being. AGI has its own unique capabilities. It perhaps might be able to think faster. It might be able to do computations more efficiently. It might be able to contain vast quantities of knowledge far beyond what a single human would be able to remember or recall. But yet, all of this gives that AGI a particular perspective, a particular set of capabilities, a particular way of exploring the infinity of ideas. Even at the rate at which a computer, a supercomputer, a network of computers, at the rate of AI will work, the good news is that the infinity of ideas is insurmountable. In an infinite universe, confronted with infinite things to discover, no speed is fast enough because no matter whether you're traveling at the 20 miles an hour that a human mind would or the 2,000 miles an hour that an AI would, the infinity of the idea space is unexhaustible. That will never end and there will be continued discovery forever. The only thing that distinguishes individual brains, individual cognitive processes in the universe is their perspective. In other words, where in the idea space are they embedded? Where in that landscape of ideas do they start and end their journeys? And it is with this difference of perspective that different cognitive systems, that different cognitive capabilities can distinguish themselves. So an artificial intelligence may be very good at a particular thing, and a human being embedded entirely elsewhere in the infinite of idea space might be different at a totally different thing. Now, what might that thing be? We don't know. It might be something that we know of today. It might be art. It might be music. It might be poetry. Or it might be something entirely different. But the point here is that the landscape of ideas is infinite. No speed can overcome it. And the primary difference between us and artificial intelligence is going to be the, the greater cognitive capability, the greater speed, the greater recall, a different type of experience and a different type of perspective that artificial intelligence brings to um, uh, the universe, to the world, to our economies, to our companies, to our persons. So this is one reason why I remain optimistic that each cognitive presence, each human being, each individual perspective continues to have value. Now, we have named ourselves after our trades. In all societies, for example, in Western societies, we have last names that are butler and farmer um, and goldsmith and so on and so forth. We take such pride in the work that we do that we call ourselves, we identify ourselves, we inculcate the work that we do as part of our identity. So when that work is now divorced from us and something else, AGI, an automated system, can do that work perhaps even better than us, 
it's no surprise that we face cognitive dissonance, that we have this internal chatter in our heads that questions our value, uh, because literally our identity is being questioned. Now, the reason why our identity is being questioned is because we have defined our identity with our trade. We have interlinked our identity with our trade. We don't have to, but we have, and that's been the human experience so far. That's been how history has evolved so far. In the future, the advent of artificial intelligence, I don't think requires us to fear AI. I don't think it requires us to stop research on AI or place bans on AI. But it does require us to rethink our human identity. It does require us to look in the mirror and understand ourselves a little bit better in light of AI.